So today we'll be going over composite beams in bending and therefore calculating the bending stress developed. So first off, what exactly is a composite beam? So let's go ahead and say I have this beam. In this case, this is the cross-sectional area of said beam. Now these da double dashed lines you see in the top and bottom just signify a certain material being used. In this case, let's just assume um, the top and bottom portions of this beam is steel. However, in between this steel, it's bonded to this X that I drew. In this case, the material of this piece is going to be, let's say, wood. This is what, by definition, a composite beam is. It's a beam composed of multiple different materials. And the main reason why you design such things is to make a beam a lot more efficient. Let's say if you used this beam made out of all steel, then it means it's, that beam is going to be significantly heavier than if you combined it with wood in this case. And you could also perhaps design it in such a way that it'll retain most of its strength. So therefore the design becomes more efficient when you're combining different materials. And so this is what a composite beam is. Now the question here is how exactly do you go ahead and calculate the bending stress when you have a moment within this kind of beam because the previous um, bending stress equation that was used which is the moment times C or the distance from the neutral axis to the top or bottom divided by the area moment of inertia now this equation assumed that the material was homogeneous mean it being one material with the same properties throughout now in this case when you're combining different materials that is no longer the case so how exactly do you go about solving the bending stress well the main method used in this case is we actually go ahead and transform this beam into so what you do now is essentially you transform this composite beam with different materials into a uniform homogeneous beam. So what you do is you essentially try to represent this wood, the properties of this wood, with the same equivalent of the stronger material, in this case, steel. So you essentially keep the same dimensions right from the top all the way to the bottom, you keep these as constant dimensions. Now the only thing that's going to change when trying to make an equivalent um, strength from the wood to the metal, this is now the width B equivalent. And the original wood dimension here, the width was just B. So what we do here is try to come up with a ratio to essentially represent this piece of wood as the same material that's stronger, in this case steel. Um, and of course the dimensions will change, right? Because a thinner piece of steel is going to be just as strong as wood. However, the wood has to be a, a lot wider for the same um, strength properties. So what you essentially do is transform a weak material into a strong one with the appropriate dimensions such that they're mathematically equivalent when you do your calculations. And so something that you're going to be using is something called the transformation factor. In this case, it's N, and this is equal to the modulus of elasticity of the strong material S divided by the modulus of elasticity of the weak material W. So there's going to be the transformation factor that you're going to be utilizing this equation. Now when it comes to solving B, the equation for B equivalent to transform the weak material into the strong one is the original with B divided by this transformation factor or the ratios of the modulus of elasticities between the weak and the strong material. Now another relationship that you're going to be using for this transformation is at the interfaces right where these points make contact of the of the wood and the steel we know one relationship being the strain of the strong and weak material at the interface itself is equivalent. 
So the strain at the interface of the strong material is equivalent to the strain of the weak material, which essentially gives us another relationship to use to relate the stresses. So the stress within the strong material is equivalent to these modulus of elasticity ratios of the strong divided by the weak times the stress developed in the weak material, which essentially is the transformation factor times the stress in the weak material. And of course, you could solve for either strong or the weak stress using this relationship. So you're going to be using these relationships to be able to do the transformation between different materials when it comes in particular for composite being specifically. Now, once you do the transformation, this equivalent beam now is homogeneous. And now you could go ahead and apply this formula because it only applies to homogeneous materials. And that's exactly what we did. We transformed it from it being a composite beam to a homogeneous beam of all the same material. But of course, we just need to do some calculations in terms of the ratios. So let's go ahead and do a problem. So for this problem statement, we have a wood beam is reinforced with steel straps at its top and bottom as shown. Determine the maximum bending stress developed in the wood and steel if the beam is subjected to a bending moment of 5 kNm. Take the modulus of elasticity of wood being 11 GPa and the modulus of elasticity of steel being 200 GPa. So in this case, we have this composite beam. In the center, you have the material being made of wood, and the top and bottom are steel plates with a moment of 5 kilometers being applied. Now, the good thing is here, we have a, cr a symmetric cross-sectional area, so the neutral axis is just determined by the dimensions, right? It's just going to be half of the total height here. That's where the neutral axis is going to be. Now, what we want to do here is transform Form the wood portion of this beam into a equivalent steel portion such that we're able to do the calculation. So let me go ahead and draw it out. So you see here the top and bottom essentially the dimensions stay all the same because they're steel to begin with. Now for the middle portion we're transforming that wood portion of the beam into steel and we have to solve for the B equivalent or the width equivalent once we transform it to steel such that it will have the same strength as the wood. So first things first, you go ahead and solve for the transformation factor N. In this case, it's going to be the modulus of elasticity of the strong material or the steel divided by the modulus of elasticity of the weak material or the wood. And so we get 18.18 here. Now to solve for the B equivalent, you use this formula. So the equivalent B or the equivalent width of that steel is is equal to the B or the original width of the wood divided by that trans that transforming factor which gives us 11 millimeters and so this is what we're going to be using for the dimension and then this is when we could go ahead and apply the maximum bending stress of this equation and the area moment of inertia is going to be based off this transformation, this B equivalent to be able to calculate everything. So the next step is to calculate the area moment of inertia. Now for the area moment of inertia of a rectangle is equivalent to the base times height cubed divided by 12. Now to simplify the calculation, I'm going to go ahead and basically get the moment area, area moment of inertia for this rectangle minus the moment of inertia of these two portions here. Basically, one rectangle on one side and another rectangle on the other side to simplify the calculation here. So this is how it's going to look. So for the rectangle, it's pretty straightforward. The 200 millimeters is the base. Of course, it converted it to meters. The height is 0.34 meters cubed divided by 12. And I went ahead and subtracted, essentially, when it comes to the width of it, I got the entire width minus the width of this section of this beam, the steel portion of the transformation. So it's going to be 200 millimeters minus 11, basically it gives us 189 millimeters. And the height is 0.3 meters cubed. So just the height of this portion here, divided by 12. And so finally, this gives us an area moment of inertia of 
2.298 times 10 to a negative 4 meters to the fourth power. And so this is what we're going to be using for the area moment of inertia. So now let's go ahead and solve for the maximum bending stress when it comes to the top portion of the steel. Since we were asked the maximum stress in both the steel and the wood, in this case, the maximum stress of uh, bending stress that we will find for the steel is at the very top. So let's go ahead and solve for it. So we have the moment 5 kilometers times 0.17 meters. Remember, this is um, the height or the location from the neutral axis all the way to the point where we're trying to solve for that bending stress in this case all the way to the top and since we're dealing with a symmetrical um, cross-sectional area in this case it's just going to be half of the height so 0.34 divided by 2 gives us 0.17 divided by the area moment of inertia which gives us a stress of 3.71 megapascals this is the maximum stress that the steel is going to experience 3.71 now we were also being asked for the maximum stress developed within the wood material. In this case, it's going to be right at the distance of that wood. The maximum distance from the neutral axis to the wood in this case would be at this location. So what we could do here is solve for the maximum bending stress of the steel itself at this point. And then we're going to go ahead and use the other equation that uses the transfer the transform transformation factor to be able to solve for the stress of the the weak material, in this case the wood. So now this is the maximum bending stress that we're seeing being developed right at that interface where the wood should be. Now this is what we're solving for at least the steel transformation beam. However, we need to take into account that we we need to solve for the bending stress of the wood itself, not the steel. And so this is where you're going to be using the other equation that relates the stress within the strong material with compared to the weak material. So this is the equation that we're using. The stress in the strong material is equal to the transformation factor times the stress of the weak material. And we just saw for the stress in the weak material. In this case, the wood. And since we chose the location where the maximum bending stress would be located for the wood, we essentially just use for this 3.26 megapascals and solve accordingly. And so we get the maximum bending stress for the wood material is equal to point. 179 megapascals here and so now what you do here with these answers you usually when it comes to design you make sure that the stress for the wood does not exceed the maximum stress maximum allowable stress as well as for the steel that doesn't exceed the yield stress and so this is um, how what you do when it comes to composite beams you essentially just transform the composite beam into one beam with the stronger material get the equivalent dimensions for it um, use the bending stress equation and then you go ahead and transform back to solve for the stress in the weak material and those are the values that you're going to be using for your design 